Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. I'm Matt Pison, and you're listening to Otaku Generation. Shame on you. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. Welcome everyone to show 848. Hi, hello everyone. I am Alan. And I am Paul. And it's just the two of us. Yeah, nice and cozy. Yeah. If only we were in the same basement. What's Reesh? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the OG crew? Actually, Paul, I don't even know what room you're in. I assume you're upstairs. That, that's... No, I'm, up, I'm upstairs. Yeah, you're basement upstairs. Basement better in terms of uh, podcasting ambiance, though. Yeah. Uh, so what did I do? Uh, well, okay. So let me, let me get the, the business out of the way. Polymatic from last month, John finally released it this month. Then we actually, today, John and I recorded a uh, brand new Polymatic for, uh, September. That's in the works. Colin Luke came out. Um, and then what did I do? Yes, I spent some time hanging out with, with Matt and friends playing, still playing a little more Stardew. I guess I bought the extra DLCs for Civilization VI. Uh, apparently I bought it in the past. I don't really, rec- I, like the trailer, when I saw the trailer, the trailer look familiar to me but i don't recall playing it in recent days but regardless i i got all the um the dlcs so so for for civilization have you played any of the previous ones i mean are you a, a long time player of the franchise uh so i've played it or i've owned it on and off of throughout the years well and right. uh and civ is turn-based uh, unless they've made big changes uh in the last version right which I yeah which i don't mind i don't mind a turn-based game is i mean even the 4x right it's turn-based Right, I have to wait. I have to sure. be patient. So, uh, I mean, I was playing Ticket to Ride today. When you're playing against the computer, it doesn't sit around and take nine hours to, to make a single turn. Yeah, you know, that's not too big of a deal. When you're playing with people, sometimes a game that should only take 40 minutes could take four hours. So, sure. so are you playing Civ on PC or on Switch? Oh, on PC. Okay, that makes sense. I'm not sure I'd want to play that one on a handheld for sure. So, so that's the thing. Not- and. And, you know, I think John does the same thing. I think he plays his Switch like you play your Switch as a handheld. I don't, I dock my Switch, and that's how I, I play stuff. Most of the time, the things that I really play specifically on the Switch are things that are, like, exclusive to Nintendo. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, makes and sense. anything that is not exclusive to Nintendo, my nature to the gravitate towards just getting on steam yeah well so for a while i was buying a bunch of the uh, sort of indie releases on steam you know mm-hmm. even stuff i already owned on pc that i hadn't gotten around to playing just because it was so damn convenient uh but now that the steam deck has been announced that's kind of uh sort of spiked my interest in doing that uh, because, you know, the Switch has a lifespan, you know, and it's going to come a point where that library is not going to be usefully playable anymore unless you've got some sort of a Switch mm-hmm. emulation platform. So, but, you know, Steam, you know, if you buy it on Steam, you've got it. So, yeah. And, yeah, so where I was pausing with that is, you know, the two people that have the most conversation about the Steam Deck is like you and John. <laughs> <laughs> we right, should right. get the two of you on an ATS to, to talk about it. Because um, I know he was bringing up the topic. He's like, did you order it, pre-order it? And I'm like, no. Yeah, I bought the Switch because I thought, all right, there were definitely some cases where I had some travel. And uh, I thought that would be really useful. And it was during those times. But I've not had any travel. It literally sits stuck. Sure. Um, occasionally, I wake it up. And then, um, you know, it used to be every once a month, I would go in and... Uh, check on my Animal Crossing. 
Sure. I have not checked on my island in probably a few months, so that mm -hmm. means that I know what's waiting for me is a bunch of pissed off villagers, and yeah. uh, uh, and then also um, a, a ton of weeds. I'm sure. Well, I, I tell you, and I think I said this on the show before, I am not a fan of pre-orders. I am not a fan of pre-orders at all. I think they are a vile and pernicious practice. But uh, the way uh, a Valve has been handling it is basically it was just a nominal fee, like five bucks or something to mm -hmm. get your place in the queue. And you had to have a Steam account that was a certain amount of time old or a certain amount of age. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to kind of uh, defeat the scalpers. Uh, and you get if you don't purchase it, you get like the five bucks back as a Steam credit. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a, a no loss given the amount I still am spending on Steam despite the length of my backlog. Oh yeah, you're you have a huge library. I got a problem, man. I feel yeah, you. I know. You, I even commented to John. I don't know if it was on recording or not, but I was like, yeah. I mean, Paul basically buys every single humble bumble. I mean, you know, if if you need a game, he's got a code. <laughs> I'm, I'm choosing now, but nonetheless, <laughs> they still just somehow keep accumulating. Yeah. Uh, but I have to say that the Steam Deck looks absolutely fantastic for emulation mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so I would, I, so um, like on the, the PSP, uh, a, a now extremely outdated Sony handheld, uh, there was a game called Petapone and Petapone 2 and Petapone 3. And there's this, mm -hmm. there's these rhythm games that you play with these, you know, cute little um, geometric um tribal villagers who are marching through the countryside and you have to you know, give them commands as they're singing uh, pata, pata, poem, and so on. It's just an absolutely wonderful little game and never been released anywhere else. Uh, you know, my PSP is gathering dust somewhere. I think the Steam Deck would be an absolutely fantastic uh, platform to you know, get that running on emulation. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. Sony, you could re-release it. I would not mind paying for it again. But no, you aren't going to do that. No, especially if it's uh, they don't have a portable. No, um, no. You know, so the the other kind of key thing here is, you know, John's like, hmm, well, I can put other things on it. But no one's going to keep me from putting other things on it. I can program with that. I mean, I don't really need. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, that isn't that isn't the sell for me. Maybe it is for you, dude, but it's like not for me, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, I could probably buy one, and yeah, maybe I'd be missing out, but. You know, the weird thing is yeah, I bought this Switch and I wanted to play some games and I just, uh, I don't know, I wanted to, whatever it was that year or something, I was just like, yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. And I, I bought myself, I don't know, it, was, it might have been, what, 2018, 2019? I definitely know I had it when I was traveling in 2019. So, and I definitely was traveling in 2019, the end of the year. So I think I traveled twice for work uh, in 2019. So um, I must have bought it for myself in 2018, I guess yeah. is what it was. See, see, the problem is the most comfortable chair in your house is the chair you sit in at your desk. If you had another chair that was more comfortable, you'd have a motivation to sit in that chair instead. And play the switch well i do have two comfortable chairs in the house the one i'm sitting in right now and the one up in, in sort of the office area which is basically the space behind the couch where i stuck another one of these chairs i don't know i was never when even when i had the dsp or the ds i um i only kind of really played it when i was traveling right when you have an airplane ride that's two hours or something like that um that's when i do it but then that's also the opportunity for me to catch up on podcasts yes. <laughs> <laughs> or download a movie on my phone or you know i mean it's, it's always something right i always have an opportunity i like the casual play i'm not a big i'll dedicate some burn-in time on something but even with like Stardew Valley, I was looking at today, I, I popped in, uh, I saw it said 18 hours. So I spent those first maybe 10, 11 hours of it on those first two days, just sort of ramping up, getting getting used to things. Um, and now that I'm kind of used to things, I have a couple of things I want to do. I have one little mission in mind right now, and uh, I'll play it occasionally. Uh, it's I'm like I'm in zero hurry to sort of marathon a gaming experience, right? And um, that's kind of how I, I play games is I want to play them a little bit with a, not a tremendous amount of commitment, yep, if that makes sure. any sense. And I want to make sure that I can kind of walk away from it. Alrighty. So anything else? I don't know. <laughs> that was longer than I expected. I forgot I was just reading. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, what about you, Paul? Yeah, uh, so this was a hell of a week. So 
Uh, we had uh, the remnants of Hurricane Ida oh, wandering yeah. through, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I thought that we'd mostly managed to to weather it, as it were, with only you know the water pouring into the basement, which is you know fairly normal. I uh, have to go out and readjust the, the drain pipes every so on to keep the stuff away from, from the foundation. But right as the storm was starting to let up, the power went out. Mm. And it stayed out for six minutes less than a full 24 hours, which is a very inconvenient length of time. So, mm. yeah, so I lost everything in the fridge, you know, just generally uh, a real pain. But I have to say, uh, for all that, it's a very privileged sort of pain because, you know, looking down at the bottom of the hill I live on, uh, I mean, people were flooded out. Mm. I mean, just their entire lives piled on the curb. Uh, for because of water damage. I mean, basements flooded. So I'm on the top of the hill, the bottom of the hill. It doesn't normally flood. Well, it decided this year it was damn well going to flood. Yeah, and so I uh, I scaved it completely fine. Now, with that being said, what I noticed in, you know, in the last year or so, there is a, like a corner of the house where like the dirt is sort of er eroding away a little bit. I guess it must be settling in when they, they corrected the house, right? When they... They sort of, um, I don't know what they did. They they sort of tied it into the the bedrock or whatever it is, and they they fixed the house. So yeah. my neighbor's houses might fall fall apart, but my house will be will be that up house. It'll be the last one standing. So um, so I hadn't actually gone around the side of the house to take a look to see how bad it is. Um, well, you're yeah. like ten minutes from Bridgeport though, and Bridgeport got hit hard. Oh really? So so I, that is right on the Schuylkill. I mean, there were, I mean, there, and it was bad. I mean, basements flooding. Mm. I think there's at least one death. I mean, if you look at the pictures, it is just absolutely. I noticed stunning. on surprising on TikTok, it fed me a bunch of stuff from Philadelphia, and I saw, I saw the video clips of or the TikToks basically where it said like Vine Street, and it was you know as a <laughs> sign on the side of a bridge, and you know you, I quickly know because I'm like. I, I swear 676 was down there at some yeah, point. That's the, the joke is currently the Vine Street Canal. Let's make yeah, it permanent. Right, exactly. And so it's this like sunken highway that runs through mm -hmm. the middle of Philadelphia. And we're talking, you know, just feet from the bottom of the overpasses going over it. I mean, mm -hmm. it looked like a shot from Amsterdam or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. And then I saw some other shots from the NJ Transit, which goes into like Trenton, Camden. Oh. And... Uh, all I saw was the tops of the the subway, the train line, mm. right? You just saw the water and you saw the tops just floating yeah. there. So uh, I had, when I used to go into the city, occasionally there would be some rough weather. And what would happen is, you know, you know, I'm heading home, of course, I'm in the train. Um, but you look down at the train and you can see some of those areas where people live like real close to the Schuylkill off the Schuylkill River right down the below there. And you could see the flooding right up to their houses. Um, you could even see it even to the high water areas of uh, where the Schuylkill tracks were. You couldn't see the tracks, but the train was just fine. But still, I mean, that's just it's crazy. Uh, yeah, and the uh, tornadoes really hit Jersey hard as well. I mean, just mm -hmm. like 25 minutes east of Philly is where they landed. So, yeah. I mean, it seems, to, and you know, the next day, you know, perfectly bright and clear. It took a long time for the water to drain away. I mm -hmm. was out there uh, the morning after on my morning bike ride, and there was like a fish on the trail. And we're talking like hundreds of miles, or excuse me, hundreds of feet from the uh, creek. Mm hmm. And so, like, it was just flopping there in a puddle. Well, I, I'm surprised we even had fish in the creek. <laughs> yeah. Well, so anyway, I picked it up and carried it back, actually. I don't know if it survived, but, mm -hmm. I mean, that was a, you know, a long distance to carry that fish. Mm. And uh, you can really see. And, like, the, at the bottom of my hill, there were just, like, cars abandoned. And this was mm -hmm. a relatively minor flooding. But people just do not take it seriously when... The instructions are do not drive into the water. They're like, oh, yeah, I can drive through that water. Yeah. No, you cannot drive through that um, water. So, there, so this happened for us for this conversation piece, whether, I mean, it's, it's interesting of note, I think, to, mm. to discuss, despite that it being regional, at least for us uh, in this context. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm literally a, about 1.6 miles from the office. So 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the particular road I live off of, like there's the little sort of pocket sort of um, townhouse community that I live in. And then we live off sort of a main road, even though it's like a back road, it's still a main road for the area. And uh, then there's another main road, which mm -hmm. has the bridge are working on the bridge right now. So one side of it is completely cut off. And that's sort of the main artery. Um, from again another main road so I live like in in very close proximity to very like three major back roads and they're all sort of um, connected to each other in an H fashion so that being the case um, the major road that I live on uh, it's again it's literally like around the corner it's like not even a quarter mile for the next one and I'm into this of the business center which again on its own touches some other main back road arteries um, to businesses. So I, in my little internal circuit, was able to get in and out to work without ever actually like driving around the rest of the area. So I did that. And even yesterday, I went over to town. I, I went and I shopped and everything seemed normal. What I didn't do is I didn't go over to Bridgeport, for example. I didn't go down the hill or any, any, anywhere towards the the what originally was themed after the port area uh so yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what that damage looks like at all yeah well things are getting cleaned up so so yeah so we got off lightly compared to louisiana that's for mm -hmm. sure yeah i mean they always get they've in historically in the past they got hit hard um it just seems seems unusual no it doesn't seem unusual it's sad that no one is taking care of this stuff. Um, I think that's a problem right there. And, you know, even though everyone's learned their lesson, here we here we are back again. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, but but on the geek stuff, or sorry, yeah. geek stuff. <laughs> yes, less right? gloomy no. things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought this that I did like a lot of gaming this past week or anime watching. Actually, I'm not sure I watched anything but the, uh, but the topic for this week, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, not a lot of anime watching, as we will get to later mm. in the show. Uh, but uh, I did um, start playing a bit more of Hades on my Switch again, actually. I realized it had been a long time since I'd picked it up, and I haven't quite uh, maxed out all the stories. There's like a few of the final post-post-game threads, where if you keep going, you can get you know endings to a lot of these different character interactions. And man, that game just feels so good to play, you know. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, I highly recommend it. I, I noticed there's cross saves, so actually maybe I could get the cross save uh, synced up to my my Steam one, which is like way early. And man, that is a great game, but it takes so long to to grind your way through everything, hmm. which is not bad because that's you know actually the game. The game is sort of about this these slow improvement over hundreds and hundreds of runs um uh, but yeah uh continue i'm actually really enjoying i'm looking forward to playing that a bit more i have not been picking up uh neo the world ends with you uh much i need to get back to that as well uh, but this was just not a good week for that i gotta say hmm. Um, bought a stack more of books to read. I can't remember. Did I talk about Gideon the Ninth last week? I don't know. Uh, that's that's the the one with the uh, lesbian necromancers in space. Uh, that doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> oh, hey, no, yes, I, no, I, that, I, that, I, that book I, deft. So that's the the blurb on the on the book. And man, it does deliver on the promise. Okay, because so. I I have a feeling that if this was a topic and Matt was present, this would be a long topic that I would have to <laughs> edit through. <laughs> so no, so it's a it's a really uh, cracking science fiction read. I'll mm. I'll save the discussion of that for next week. Uh, I'll Max feel bad if I did. Uh, th this <laughs> was a discussion that I just sort of yeah. I just sort of listened through it without thought. <laughs> Uh, what else? And I started in on another series that I've been meaning to check out uh, for a long time, which is Joe Abercrombie, Joe Abercrombie's The First Law. Uh, so I've uh, been on my list for a long time. I just bought a stack of books that I had been meaning to read or was interested in. 
Uh, bought a few more this weekend, working my way through them. So I'm basically mm. reading first books of series right now to figure out what to dip into more. You know, Joe Abercrombie's one, uh, The Murderbot Diaries, enjoyed the first one of that. Um, I've got Malazan, which everybody on the forums I'm on seems to just adore or despise. So we'll see. Um, anything else um, on the, oh, actually on the tabletop role-playing front. Uh, I'm actually going to be running my first RPG in something like 15 plus years. We won't look at the exact number of years because it's probably <laughs> pretty embarrassing. But grad school has a way of sort of squeezing out every bit of joy and happiness from your life. And you know, I'm slowly, you know, these, oh, these many years later, still trying to pick up, you know, various pieces that fell on the floor. Well, one of those is, as I've mentioned, you know, occasionally over the last couple months, uh, tabletop role playing. Uh, but I'll actually be game mastering my first game on Labor Day. Uh, of uh, Fate RPG, uh, running a scenario called Masters of Umdar, uh, somewhat inspired by our recent Masters of the Universe show, as uh, He-Man and other similar planetary romance type uh, properties are inspirations for Masters of Umdar. So, so we'll see. Got three people signed up. It's been a heck of a long time since I've run a game. We'll see see if I pull it off. But you know, everybody seems really keen and excited. So we'll just all all have some fun. So actually, a few uh, months back, I joined a bunch of other podcasts discords. Mm -hmm. So I listened mm -hmm. to something like uh, you know like twenty five to thirty different role playing podcasts, which I should probably mention on the show at some point. Uh, they don't come up that often. Uh, but like I picked you know eight or nine of them and joined their Patreons, which which often gives you access to various um, and like discords, discords and so yeah. on. Uh, and also join like a bunch of generic uh, role-playing discords as well. So uh, one of those is for uh, Roleplay Rescue, which is a, a show about getting back to uh, playing role-playing games after a long time away. And it was one of the ones I was listening to a lot over the summer. Uh, and actually, one of the players from that I met on that Discord there. So we'll see. Cool. See how it goes. Yeah. yeah. So it's fun. I'm looking forward to getting back to the table. I mean, you know, role playing was a big part of my life for a uh, for a long time, and then, you know, for that that period in like the early 2000s, it was just really hard to find people. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. so so I actually. Uh, originally f found uh, the Suburban Otaku Squad, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the anime club where we all met on this show uh, that I was a member of for many, 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 many years. Uh, but I actually found the flyer for that at the uh, role-playing game store in King of Prussia, the Complete Strategist. Oh, yeah, the Complete Strat, yeah. So, you know, if I'd happened to, to join a uh, role-playing game group instead of an anime club at that point, you know, this uh, probably would be a very different podcast. At this <laughs> you point. would certainly, <laughs> certainly do. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no, that's probably it. I think yeah. we should probably yeah. uh, move along. All right. So let's get to our topic, which is... <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I was uh, so busy talking about other stuff. I have forgotten about our topic, which is mongrel. Yeah, I was, I was wondering how we were supposed to say. Yeah, that. I've got. I, I, mongrel, it's not exactly clear. Mongrel, it's um. Mongrel. It's not in fact man girl, but it is a. It is mongrel. not a portmanteau of man and girl, but a portmanteau of manga and girl. Yeah, okay. I mean, this is a series of shorts. You can get through it pretty quickly. Uh, there's only what thirteen. They're only what like three minutes a pop or something like that uh, three and a half i think but something half like of a minute of or that is actually the titles yeah possibly yeah. a bit more so. um i mean i don't love the opening music outside mm -hmm. of that it's not very painful <laughs> okay so what do we got so mon girl is a four coma strip uh, which is to say it's this you know four panel uh typically comedic format you know, with a, uh, a cheap gag uh, to, and cute characters. And it has, and this is, you know, every so often one of these will get an anime adaptation. And it is often a really dubious choice. I mean, prob I mean we've talked about this on the show a lot. Probably Azumanga Dayo is the best of this genre. Uh, which, despite its four coma origins, actually managed to put together pretty damn good episodes. I mean, they actually, the episodes felt like they have a flow to it. 
Um, and something like this, there was very little chance of that. So it's a mercy that they did not try to make these episodes more than three and a half minutes. So there's probably like a, about a minute per per strip, I guess. You know, there's probably like one to th or two to three strips in each of the episodes that get animated. And and it's slight. OK, but OK, back one step further to what is this about? For some reason, which is not clear for completely inexperienced girls, um, I guess they're adults. They aren't drawn like adults, but like they're, they're clearly meant to be adults of mm -hmm. some sort. Yeah. Uh, have started or have been selected or for some reason are running a, mon a monthly manga magazine. Yeah. Despite yeah. not having any experience and no apparent means of support or funding for said magazine. Well, except their uh, their editor, basically. Well, so it's it, which editor? So the, you mean the, of the four main girls who are members of the staff or? Uh, yeah, the uh, the main one who drives everything. Uh, yeah. the associated, associated uh -huh. editor or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh I already forgot her name. She she's she secretly <laughs> a uh a mod of uh, an Oh idol. the assistant. Well but again, you know the question is for a show like this, where does the money come from? Sure. I mean this you know publishing is just a brutally competitive business. And the main joke is that these people are completely incompetent at what they're trying to do and slightly lazy at least part of the time and the joke is oh we are very good at this but nonetheless we are managing to make it a success so so yeah so you've got uh four girls um i, I gotta say i have also forgotten their names i think hannah's the main one um but you know they they've all have their 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 little quirks uh they are not deeply developed quirks as you might guess from a show that runs for three and a half minutes yeah, it's only but, three and a uh, half minutes there's not much going on there but the main girl is scatterbrained and she loves manga and she wants to be the editor-in-chief and doesn't know anything about being editor-in-chief and the her glasses wearing second in command uh who actually does in fact know things about manga from her high school career drawing doujinshi uh is the one who sort of keeps everything on track uh and, and then there's a couple other girls who are it's not even clear why they're there uh, except that they have different hair colors. Except one of the hair colors is not that different from the main editor girl. So again, it's not exactly good. This is not the, the the most cunningly put together of shows. I've got to say. No, but it it you know it benefits from being short. So <laughs> yeah. there's not a yeah, lot so to explain or not a lot to expect in given the short cycle of it. And I think probably a good thirty seconds of it is the opening. Yeah. And um, so the, 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 each episode is more or less about some aspect of creating manga. Now, if you look at a series like uh, Bakuma, for example, this does not deliver by any stretch. Uh, this is, uh, you know, th these are more references to things that are done in the creation of manga as opposed to anything that actually reflects a reality of the industry. Uh, or of artistry or anything. It's no, these are characters who fit these stereotypes. They are doing these things that they either, you know, fit or do not fit into the role. And, and yeah, that's basically, that's basically the gimmick. Uh, so they, you know, there's the episode where they go on the tour around Japan to, for research for, for their, for one of the artists. Uh, and the joke there is they only get to spend like 37 minutes in each place before they have to move on to the next one. Uh, there's the one where they go to not Kamaket to sell their stuff. And the joke there is everybody gets distracted by Kamaket and the system editor is actually really famous for the Dujinshi she drew back into high school and is deeply embarrassed about. And yeah, she and gets recognized, the... and <laughs> yeah. to, to promote, she uh, she cosplays cosplays instantly. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, yeah, um, you know, so this is a, a hard series to recommend. I'd say. I mean, it is just so relentlessly fluffy. Um, you know, it's much more about 
cute characters and it's much more about in fact generically cute characters i mean there's not a lot there's you know a touches of fan service here and there it's not the main driver for the show um you know they tossed in but move on yeah i mean i wasn't overly offended by it uh the only thing that sort of bothered me and and again i mean bothered me is like you know air quotes bothered me is so very light light statement uh, attached to that um was sort of the having to listen to the opening um outside of that uh i mean this is this perfectly fine i, I think you could spend an hour 90 minutes or whatever it is that oh time. no it's it's, it's less than that. it's like it's like 45 minutes you're something like that yeah yeah it's about an hour so you could spend that hour doing something else <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think i think you you get more time out of that um, but it wasn't the worst of things. Uh, animation is okay, given that it's a short. It's not the worst there either. Um, nothing amazing. Um, there's not a tremendous amount going on. Um, the one joke of the girl being recognized, and she's like, no, no, you're mistaken. Uh, and then she's like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. let me get attention here. So she cosplays, and they go, oh, my God, that's our editor. You know, I mean, outside of that, that's that's about the extent of depth you get out of this yep. show, if you can call it that, short. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so what else to say? So um, there are a lot of really interesting shows about making manga and making anime. This, this is, is not one of them. Not one of them. <laughs> so like if, if you want a show about sort of inexperienced girls making anime, uh, it is hard to do better than Hands Off Azoken. Uh, which we discussed a few seasons back, and that's the uh, I think it's I think it's a Masaki Uasa show. I can't remember for certain. Those are the but two it, girls where they go into their fantasy. Uh, uh, three girls actually, three but yes, girls, yeah, so you've yeah. got the same the same sort of uh, archetypes. But they cut it to three because that's the number of characters that they could come up with ways to differentiate. You've got the main character who's wildly fanciful. You've got the you know the other girl who is all about money and keeping things on track and one who's just about the art of it all mm -hmm. uh but yeah sort of the but the the wild fantasy of the right. animation and that's the interesting I mean, part of it right they go into this super fantasy and they're having a dog fight and whatever it is and it's really interesting uh, yeah, I, I mean, is... the texture of that show is just so well done, mm -hmm. and it has a you know a, a unique animation style so you'd expect from something from Masaki Uesa. It has an absolutely banging theme song as well. But in contrast to this short <laughs> show, um, show again, also lightly you know air quotes around it, um, no, not nearly as no. wonderful. <laughs> Uh, so what? So what else could we recommend? So we could recommend uh, Monthly Girls no Zaki Kun. I'm not sure if we've done a show on that one. It's one that uh, Andrew might have uh, picked. I mean, it sounds familiar. Periods. But I yeah, don't... it's about a uh, uh, it's a it's a high school romance. Uh, you know, a girl discovers that uh, uh, her crush is actually a famous uh, manga artist, and she ends up working as his assistant. Oh yeah, so it's I kind of a romantic one. comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do. I remember um, there's, that one. There's a couple. There's a couple other. There's Shurabako. I I haven't. I'm trying to remember if I've watched all of that one. Uh, that's uh, you know girls working in the in the uh, in the anime industry. Yeah, I don't think I finished that one. It's been on my list to get back to. Uh, but of course, the heavyweight is Bakuman, which is by the authors of Death Note, and it's um, kind of mixed. But on the whole, it's just an excellent show for providing actual insights into the demands on you know what it means to have a regular manga the competition for you know various uh, uh prizes for you know continuations for anime adaptations and you know it's a bit hot-blooded it's got that you know shown an angle to it but that's not the, not the whole of it uh, i think there's some smaller ones uh like seiyu's life um what else? Um, I, there was an OVA. What was it? Uh, Animation Runner Kudlomi. Uh, there's probably good. more. I probably should have made a list before actually <laughs> picking up this topic. But yeah. but but bottom line is, if you haven't watched uh, Bakuman or uh, Hands Off Azoken, those are probably two good ones mm -hmm. to start with. I think the the ultimate point here is there are some better um, options 
compared to yeah, what yeah. they were trying yeah, to yeah, achieve here. Quite right. And I think in general, the, the takeaway is if you were thinking about Mongirl, watching Mongirl, you probably ought to do a little bit of research and watch absolutely anything else. Not because this mm -hmm. is the worst show in the world, but that is probably 45, better, uh, 45 minutes of your time that would be better used in another way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A game. You can hop <laughs> yeah, onto the OG yeah. Minecraft server. There you go. I mean, there almost anything. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's not the worst of things, but it's probably, yeah. again, I think, you know, that time could be better well spent, you know. Yeah. So, it, so this was from 2013. It's from Studio Doga Kobo. Um, I haven't watched a whole bunch of their stuff. Um I'm looking back at their 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 list of titles, and they there's like the helpful fox spirit Senko San, how heavy are the dumbbells you lift, uh, asteroid in love, the the wretched Uchi no Maiden ga Uza Sugidu, uh, Himoto Umaru Chan, Gabriel Dropout. Uh, just very few things they've selected that I like, though they did also do Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, so they do have that going for them. Uh, but other than that, uh, there's nothing in their their back catalog that's really jumping out at me. Well, maybe Eleven Eyes. It's, I can't recall much oh, about Eleven that. Eleven Eyes? One. Yeah, that's a 2009 show. Nope, don't remember that. Yeah, it's ringing the bell. Maybe it's just because it comes first in a lot of uh, anime lists because it starts with a one. Mm, okay, it gets filed before the A's. So I guess I guess that's what I've got to say about that. Watch something else. Yeah, uh, I you know we don't even need Matt's take on it. I'm sure it's not very positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we just spent probably 20 minutes just telling you watch some other shows. <laughs> So I think that tells you everything you need to know. But if you are curious for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, OJLink.com slash 5SM, 5SN, and 5SO. The first one will take you to Crunchyroll. second one will take you to the wiki. And third one will take you to ANN. Um, yeah, I don't know. Go watch some other shows that are better. <laughs> I think that's the recommendation. No argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then that um, was a really short show. Um, they're rare, but uh, let's, let's let's just close things up. So, for all the things we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.otakageneration.net or ognetworks.tv. You want to email us, you can do that, otakagenerationn at gmail.com. You want to become a patron supporter, you can do that, oglink.com slash patreon. You want to come in and hang out with us in Discord and see the pictures of the various things that Paul cooks because he, he, he showed us something more, uh, oglink.com slash Discord. Okay. Well, last time was sort of like a fortune, maybe. So I don't have much high hopes for this either. Um, okay, that was backwards. Uh, um, why does it have to be so long? Okay, let's just see if I can suffer through this. A good friendship is often more important than a passionate romance. I mean, that's that's a reasonably good statement. I mean, it's but truthful, but I it's have not to a say, not a fortune. Not a fortune. I mean, you know, it doesn't it doesn't tell you anything about the future. It doesn't indicate you should take a course of action. It does not indicate mm. that something might or might not happen. It is just a perfectly bland statement uh, about the way things are in the world. Yeah. And that's not a fortune, man. Not yeah. a fortune. All right. Well, I'll take a picture of it so you guys know we we didn't just make that up. <laughs> I, uh, I I did bring dumplings to Matt's thing, and so he has some fortune cookies, and those fortune <laughs> cookies, I assume, have from some pretty lame fortunes in them, but now has a couple fortunes he can read from his side. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, as usual, you know, please stay home, please stay safe, and please stay healthy. Until next week, have a good one.